Hello, welcome back to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information that you didn't even know you needed. Today, we're going to pit Android versus iOS with parental controls. Now, I get a lot of feedback that I am very anti-Apple, which I am, but I do know technology and I can be objective when it comes to technology. So I'm going to give you three pros and two cons for each, for Android and for iOS, and kind of tell you where they are similar. All of this is regarding parental control. So this is Android versus iPhone for parental controls, the built-in parental controls uh, for your kids. So let's get right into it. So because I get so much feedback that I am very critical of Apple and iPhone, especially when it comes to your kids, um, I will start with the pros for iOS. There are a few that iPhone has that Android does not. So number one is communication limits. This is something that Android does not have built in, but it is in iOS where you can limit the contacts in the iPhone for your child so that they can only text or communicate with people who are actually in their contacts and you can control whether or not they can add these contacts or not. So I really like the communication limits that iOS has. Number two pro for iOS is the ability to remove the app store altogether. I really like this feature. You can make sure they have no ability to install any apps whatsoever. The only caveat here is that if you do remove the app store, then it will prevent all of the apps from updating that they already have. So every once in a while, you will need to enable that so you can get those apps updated, but then you can remove it again. And I really do like that feature that you can completely remove the app store from the child's device altogether. Third on my list is the ability to disable passcode changes. So if you have a rule in your house that your child is not allowed to change their passcode or you always um, need to know the passcode to their phone, then enabling this will disable their ability to change that passcode. And I do really like that feature as well. So those are the three pros that iOS has Android beat on. So now let's get into the three pros for an Android device. The first one on my list is the ability to take back app approvals. With iPhone, after you approve an app and decide later that you want to take that back, you can't do that. But with Android, you can take back that app approval so that next time they try to install that application, it will send you another notification and you would have to approve that again. So I love that about Android, you can take back app approval. Second one on my list is the ability to lock the device at will. So I can at any time just go into my Google Family Link and lock the ability to use the phone. It completely blocks it out, it says time's up. You can't use your phone at all. I love that ability to just at any point just lock the phone and it locks it completely. So um, that is one pro for Android. And the last one is Google integration. There is a lot of products that kids use, so Gmail and YouTube and Google Classroom and things like that. So the integration with all of these Google products is really great with Android because you can set safe search on Google Chrome. You can set um, restricted mode on YouTube. All of these things can be done through Google Family Link and limiting their account on Google Family Link. So I love that integration with all of the other Google products that the kids use today. Now let's get into two cons for each device. Like I said, I do have a lot more cons for iOS, but I'm limiting it to two because we've got two for Android and two for iOS. The first one for Android is the ability to sideload apps. So with Android, because it's a more open operating system, you can install an app from what's called an APK. It's just a file that you download and install the app that way instead of going through the Google Play Store, which is limited through Google Family Link. You can disable the ability to sideload apps um, through Google Family Link, but 
If you haven't set that specifically, there is that ability out there that they can sideload these apps and bypass uh, the limitations on the Google Play Store. So you need to make sure that that's in there. But that is one limitation of Android that it's a little more open and you can probably um, find a little bit more workarounds through the Android operating system. And then the second con is, as I mentioned, you use Google Family Link in order to manage an Android device. And with Google Family Link, you have to install that app. It's not built into the operating system, although it works very well with the operating system because they are both Google products. But you do have to download Google Family Link on the parent's device and download Google Family Link on the child's device in order to set up these restrictions restrictions and these limits. So uh, that is another limitation. It's not necessarily built into the operating system, but you do have to download it outside of that in order to set it up. So the two cons for iOS is the first really big glaring one is that you have to have an iOS device to manage an iOS device. With Android, you can download Google Family Link onto an iPhone and manage an Android device just as easily as if you had an Android. But with iOS, you can't manage a child's device through family sharing and through screen time that's built into iOS without an iOS product. So you would have to have another iPhone or an iPad in order to set up the limits for your child's device. So that is a huge limitation is you have to have an iOS device to manage an iOS device. And then the last on my list for the cons for Apple is that it does not play nice with third party apps. So if you have a third party parental control app, it is very limited in what it can monitor and what it can do on an iOS device. Third party apps are very limited because of Apple's operating system. So now that you've gotten the pros, the cons of each, what can be done on both of these operating systems? So they both offer GPS. You can track the location of the device at any time. They both offer app limits so you can set up time limits on individual apps and you can also set up time limits for the entire device itself so it can be disabled at a certain time every night so the device can go to sleep. They also both offer content filters. They are limited, so the content filter in iOS can only filter Safari. So if they download Google Chrome, it's going to bypass any of that. But, um, and with Android, it's going to limit it inside of Google Chrome. So if they download a secondary browser, then it won't have those controls over that content. So, you know, you gotta make sure to use the built-in browser for the phone if you're going to use those kind of content filters. But these content filters also translate into the application stores. So the Google Play Store and the App Store can show limited apps based on the age of the child. And finally, both of them give you the ability to approve app downloads. So if your child wants to download an application, they need to send that approval to your parent app. You can approve any app download. So both of them offer that as well. So. Hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight as to kind of the pros and cons of each device for your child. You can make the best decision for your family. If you have any questions at all, definitely follow me over on Instagram. I'm at Family Tech on all social media platforms to go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to me on YouTube as well so that you can get more information about all of the technology news tips, devices that you didn't even know you needed. Thanks.